<laughs> we have to keep the dancing going because no one else gets to see yeah. the dancing right no, now. No, the dancing is just for me. <laughs> <laughs> the dancing well, I just... always stop dancing and you <laughs> always keep going. But I'm like, the music stops, freeze. Everybody clap your hands. <laughs> <laughs> Oh Hello, God. everyone. Hello, everyone. I'm so excited for today. Yeah. You got, we are here with Rachel Ballas and, oh my God, these overheads probably don't make any sense. I can't really swap them around. There we go. That makes more sense. Um, yes. We are doing like a, a class in two parts, except all in one day. <laughs> so, yeah. Part one, we're doing Brio Wrapping 101. Rachel's going to show us a few ways to wrap brios, like the basic way, and then maybe so, even some spicier ways. And some then, spicier ways. <laughs> and then we're going to do a chakra bracelet using some of the uh, chakra be beads from the, what month are we here? <laughs> August. August. I should have put them in a fancy tray like you. Oh, I like your tray. You and your dollar store trays, Sam. Oh, you mean my my... my it's my very rich crystal trays. There we go. My little triangle trays. Um, and we're and this chakra design is inspired by the bracelet Rachel came up with in the Seagrass class a few months ago or many months ago. And it it pairs whatever bead you want, and then you accent it with brios. Oh, there Rachel's got our example. Uh, well, I, yeah, this is the one I pulled out. This is, I think this might've been the one I did in the class. I love this color combination. Um, so okay. we're just going to alter this with our uh, bead box beads. So we're going to use the chakra beads and we're going to use the um, orange brios from the bead box. I know I have like a billion of these little plastic trays. Whew. All right, that one's on the floor. <laughs> I need like a dog for my beating space. So not like a real dog, just like like a bead dog that just picks up for the, what bead, purpose? The, the beading items that I drop and then I don't have to go searching for them later. <laughs> well, you know how you like drop food and you're like, the dog's going to clean the floor. I need that, but I need to get the stuff back. Right. And not, not like way later in a gross way. Like I, I need to be like, hey, bead dog, can I just have my stuff back? And they're you know, like, I, sure, I, here's a pile of stuff you lost. I used to have a <laughs> vacuum cleaner where it was a vacuum, but it would like put somehow like sorted the beads and it like would put them all into a little bowl for you. And keep them separate from the cat hair? Mm, I don't know. <laughs> Wait, Jesse said bead llama. Now I want the llama. Jesse, I want, can you throw me the llama? A bead llama. That sounds very large for my tiny apartment. Um, Way funnier. Oh. Bead llama. <laughs> Why do we name him again? Gemma. This is from Pamela, right, Jesse? Yeah. This is our, our. No, it's Lynette. Lynette Giroux sent this to us already. Okay. <laughs> We're ready to go with our bead llama. <laughs> To do some brio wrapping. I hope everyone is ready. I hope folks are beating along. My goal for today is just this is our end of week. We want to chill out. We want to just have some fun beating together. Let the stress of the week go. So let's do some brio wrapping. Yeah, we're going to do a couple different types. So I'm going to do the um, just like your typical brio first. So it'd be I've got these and then I've got um, We'll do like a gem one too. But before I even get into that, I want to talk about, um, and we, we talk about this every time we talk about brios, uh, not using wire that's too big for your brios. Right. Today we're going to use 24 gauge wire in the project. Right now, I'm not going to use 24 gauge for these brios. I usually like to use 26 for brios because that usually gives you enough room. So when you put your uh, wire through your brio, <clears throat> like this is not a good color for this. That's when you put your wire through your brio. You want to make sure that you can like there's a lot of space around it because it, now it's not as 
pertinent with glass, but it still is, but with like a, a fine gem where that point is really small. The gems, you can break them. So this is a nice chunky gem. This is one of the big carnelian ones from you. But if you've ever broken a Brio, chances are you were using too large a gauge of wire for it. Mm -hmm. um, because I have like my little jar of sadness and also cat whiskers. So it's happiness too. Um, <laughs> <laughs> everyone thinks I have like this huge jar. It's tiny, but these are all my broken Brios of sadness that I didn't want to throw out because they were expensive. So don't learn the hard way. Um, make sure that you're using a small enough gauge wire when you're wrapping brios. Like I said, 26 gauge, especially on the Indian cut ones, um, is usually a pretty good gauge. This is 24. Um, this is good for most of the glass. And I'm using um, glass brios in this bracelet design. So we're going to use 24 for it. But uh, if you were using stones, like I said, usually a, if they're small ones, Usually 26 gauge is the best gauge for that. Um, if they're a little bigger, like these carnelian ones, 24 gauge is fine. But the 26 is also easier to maneuver, which you kind of want something sturdy, yet easy to maneuver. And 26 is really that. If you use 28, it's going to be too flimsy. Um, 24 is a little less easy to maneuver. Yeah, the biggest so, factor with the gems is going to be if it's a machine cut gem, usually cut in China or if it's an Indian cut gem, which is tends to be cut by hand or just using a smaller burr hole to drill it. Um, so like I just did a test on the onion amethyst brios that came in the August Sam Speed box. Mm -hmm. I have them right and here. They're a machine cut. I just put my 24 gauge to them and it fits totally fine. Like I'm not worried there's, about breaking There's a good it. amount of space. Yeah. So it totally the onion brios, on the these onion brios also, the hole is a little bit deeper into the pre. Uh, a little bit deeper into the beads so you've got this is a big hole you're right you've got um more bead above the hole so there's more material that's going to be holding the tension as opposed to like the really pointy brios where there's less material above it to like push back right a little less structural integrity yes See, that's the entire phrase I was looking for. And I got you, Rachel. Didn't, I'm here it for didn't you, Rachel. come to me. Um, uh, Lori says she wants these containers that I have my beads in. And I've been trying to get you to get these, Sam. I know. I have also been... I'm, I'm curious if folks' thoughts on this. I've also been realizing, like, I could theoretically get all these, like, other things for the shop, like tools and wire and things. But, like... I always still feel like the most fun thing that I have in the shop is always going to be beads. Like we put yeah. findings up and we've sold and some people have picked them up, but like we still have a lot of findings sitting there. And part of me is just like, you know what I know how to do well is like picking beads that I like. Maybe that's what I should just do all the time. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. But I think that the thing like findings, yeah, sure. Those could relate to beads, but I feel like these trays just these trays. You want these trays? I want only these trays. <laughs> I, know I, can, I know I can order them from beads. I know these trays I are universal. You use these for seed beading. You would use these for stringing. You would use it when you take your beads off the strand, you scoop them all up like that. It's the best. That's funny. Um, I, yeah, I know it's because like, I, yes, I want to order like the nip. I love those like nipper tools. The, the like for cutting, not the one you, not the flush cutter. There's like a nipper tool just for cutting strands. That's super helpful that I've always wanted to get. Inverse. For cutting strands, like cutting beads off the strand. Yeah, I'll, I just show you it. I, I'm gonna be honest. I definitely just use my wire cutters for that. Fair, fair beads. Um. Fair. <laughs> but just these trays. That's, what, that, okay. that's all I'm asking for. I, I everyone always asks. Everyone always asks. Um, I feel like you can get tools anywhere, and you really probably can get these trays anywhere. But I feel like the trays coming from your bead guy, as opposed to like tools, like the trays yeah. are universal. Got it. I feel like you could even like scoop up like cereal with these. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, um, and somebody asked about what bead map this is. I honestly don't remember. I don't love them. Um, they fit best in my board, but I really like the like fluffy ones that are like a fluffy felt. And I and honestly the cheaper don't ones. Know. Are they cheaper? They're the ones that you can get for like a dollar at a normal, yeah. like just like a a regular um 
you you should carry bead mats too just these ones just the like dollar ones these are my favorite the beads won't go anywhere other than like the sticky mats but i don't a cat hair gets stuck to those anyway let's um we have a few different things to wrap so <laughs> let's um let's get started with that so cool. i'm going to i'm going to um this is a piece of 26 gauge wire and I just made it really short. So we're going to cut that again. I usually start with anywhere from like four to six inches. It's going to be too much probably unless you've got a really big bead. But um, as I always say, I like to have it to work with. And the nice thing about using copper and sterling and stuff is there are places you can sell it to, or send it to that will melt it down. So you're not wasting per se. Um, so... I noticed a lot uh, when I was first teaching this is a lot of the videos on YouTube have you like use both strands and then like tuck it up through a really complicated looking way and then like clip it in there. No. Um, <laughs> Rachel said, way, yeah, not Rachel's method. This is the way I like to write, wrap them and I think actually I think I'm going to pull this bead mat out because I think it's a little hard to see. Um, this is the way that I like to wrap them and I find it's a lot easier and you don't have to like put your tools through some like wacky area. Um, so I've got, uh, I put it through my bead and then I leave like a little tail. It doesn't need to be anything big. It just it needs to be enough for you to kind of wrap it around once. So then I come in and I pinch my wire above the bead. This keeps it from moving around too much while I take the tiny tail and I just wrap it around like once right by the bead. And then I'm going to come in here and clip it. You can tuck it if you want. We're going to wrap over it. Make sure it's on there. Okay. Then we're going to come in with our round nose pliers. And if you hold them above where you've done that little route, you'll have a, a longer portion that you're going to be wrapping. So it kind of just depends on if you want to have more to wrap and lead down to your bead or if you want to have less. So we'll go ahead and try that. I don't always do it like this. I've been really into messy wraps for like last year. So we're going to try and do it nice last year. Bit. I feel like you've been doing messy wraps for a while. I don't know. <laughs> Your answer. So, okay. So I've got my loop that I just made. And I'm going to grab with my, you can use, um, these are just chain nose. You can use your, what are those ones you always tell me to use? Nylon jaws. I can never find them. I never use those. <laughs> oh, you Rachel. probably should use those. I never use them. Okay. So we're just going to start wrapping. You can use your pliers if you don't have a lot of um, hand strength. That's totally fine. So we're going to go and wrap down to the bead. And we're going to wrap over the bead a little bit. And then one thing I also, I don't like having to tuck my wire down here because I just feel like it's less secure. So I'm going to bring it back up. Kind of gives it this fancy looking loop thing and then i'm just gonna wrap back up to the top loop until i feel like it looks pretty good this one looks a little wonky i usually wrap it further down i'm gonna do it again so this is our like most standard brio wrap right yeah and i i can even grab like a gem brio and we can do that too with the points let's see uh, amethyst here. This is way too long a piece of wire, but <clears throat> like I said, like six inches is probably good. Um, okay, put it through the hole. Pinching it. And then you just do your little little wrap. If you have problems with the gem moving around on you, you can also do your little wrap to where you catch the top of the gem in it. If that makes sense. So when you, you do your initial wrap up, you can take this little tail and wrap it down one. 
and that can help keep your gem in place. I did not give myself enough of a tail to be maneuvering that. <laughs> that is the world's smallest tail. I feel like everything is like fine and amazing until I go to show people and then it's just like, Rachel doesn't know what she is doing. <laughs> No, everything becomes about um, 74 times as difficult when the camera is on your hand. You know, okay. Give yourself a bigger tail if you're going to wrap it twice. <laughs> okay, so I'm pinching it on the top of the bead. I'm coming around and wrapping it. And then I'm going to wrap it down over the top of the bead one more time. And that, if you're having trouble with your bead moving around, can like kind of pre-wrap it down and that'll help you. It will make the wrapping on top of your bead look a little bit bigger, but it'll help you a lot out a lot. Okay. So we're gonna come in here. This time I'm just gonna fold it down where it's at. Makes me feel very strong to be able to do that. Um. <laughs> you are very strong, Rachel. So strong. strong me and this 26 gauge wire. <laughs> I'm the strongest person it's, on earth. I mean, you literally just bent a metal bar. I did. So I'm going to wrap down. You could like enter the circus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ooh, the girl so who never pretty. leaves her house. So, and then I'm, I'm going to come back up and just wrap again around the top. And that. I find especially if you're using it for like this kind of design where we're going to be using on the bracelet, having it wrap back up and tuck in a place that you know it's not going to go anywhere is important. So unless Vicky, you want to put like little dabs of glue on it, which I don't. No. So Vicky's asking about a double wrap loop. And actually I was something I was just thinking about because I've actually started to deviate a little bit from how I initially learned to wrap from you, Rachel. Mm -hmm. I you like to use now... two, tra two strands. I'm addicted to two strands. I find there's way for me, there's like less margin for error. Okay, we can do a two strand. I'm gonna send a quickly demo what I do. I'm curious what you think. Oh um, yeah. So I cut a little bit longer bit of wire. Mm -hmm. Probably a couple inches longer than Rachel was using. And I bring my brio to the center. And I still use my pinch method that Rachel goes for. I find that still is like the best. Gets it nice. Usually I'm able to get it pretty centered. Never as centered as I want, but usually still works out fine. And then, so these strands are now even. And I come in with my round nose and I grab it pretty close to the brio. I find it works fine. It'll focus. Bend that down. Oh, see, it got bent up on camera. I came around and made my loop. Mm -hmm. And then I just keep it on the round nose. I find I get I have a good grip this way yeah. for when I do the rest of the wrapping. And I like the look of having like all this wire for the wrap. And it's kind of saves me that step of having to like knit, like tuck. I, I'm really bad at tucking in wire. So mm -hmm. if I can do that one last time. Like, I am all for it. And I don't really mind the look of the, of like the double loop at the top there. Yeah, it's cute. That's kind of become my method. I kind of fused your method and then I was like, I need to simplify this for myself. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I don't know why, you know, I used to do that a lot and I don't know why I decided to go to the one strand method, but I do have another way that is with two strands that I used to wrap them. And I think it's just cause I like the look of the loop at the top of the bead better when it's one strand. Mm -hmm. But when I was doing two strands, I actually would twist them together. So, so that hopefully I would have enough to wear when I go to make my loop, it would be like this pretty little twisted loop and I could still grab it with my other pliers. I don't like leaving it on the round nose pliers. It's just a little bit more difficult for me. All right. I'm just twisting them. This is not my best twisting job, but, and then I come in and 
make my loop. I think I made this twist too long, but that's okay. It's just Ooh, easier I for me to hold it. Yeah, it's kind of has some extra texture. I like the, see, there's so many different methods for wrap, for brio wrapping. Folks are always like, what's the right way to do it? There's not like, I don't think there really is. A... I don't, yeah, like I said, like the ways, if you look a, a, around um, YouTube a lot, uh, this is the way that I wrap them is not the primary way that they show you how to wrap them, but the primary way that they show you how to wrap them, I feel like it's so hard. Um, when I feel like the way I do it works just as well. So, yeah. So I think if you're if you're going for the more traditional look of the brio wrap, you probably want to use the one strand. Yeah, the most the one. But if you don't if you don't mind the, I like the chunkiness of the more wire. I think it's cool. I think it'd be really cool on this bracelet that we're gonna do today. Um, but yeah, I lost the end of that sentence. Um, <laughs> it, it went. Um, <laughs> It went to it another fine, country right? on a travel visa. Yeah, yeah. It, it was like, bye. <laughs> I think the cat walked by and I was like, what's he going to do? And <laughs> then he, he's a little bit of a wild card. I wasn't sure. I fed them before the live today, like hoping that that would kind of keep them away from me. But we'll see. Um, okay, so next. Huh? No, go, ahead. go ahead. I want to. We, we do have we probably have a lot more to cover on this class. Yeah, um, next I'm going to do the onion brio, and then I'm also going to do a dagger, because that's a little bit different. The dagger would be perfect for um, two strands, too, because I think that some of the the difficulty with the check daggers is that they are so, um, they have so much extra at the top. Mm -hmm. So this is the onion brio. Onion brios, I find, personally... <laughs> a lot harder to wrap oh interesting Honestly. i think that maybe it's just because i have trouble holding them i think that they are so much harder to wrap for me they're probably a lot they'd be really pretty strong i think they probably be better strung than wrapped but we're gonna wrap them anyway i'm still doing my um my little uh whatchamacallit my little like peak thing where i squeeze them together and then but I always have trouble on the onion brios. I know you like gave me a shout out on a live sale earlier this week. You're like, Rachel can wrap anything. <laughs> onion brio well, is hard. Um, <laughs> but now I like really want to use these in a necklace. So, so are you doing it any differently so far? No, I'm just, it's just, just holding on to it, honestly, is the hardest part. But I'm still coming up with that little peak that it's got. And I actually think for this one, I'm not even going to go down all the way on the Brio. Because, like, the onion is really the allure of this. Like, you want to see it. Right. Okay. Hello. Please stay the way I want you to. He keeps moving. Can you hear him? Of course. He sounds like... He sounds very sweet right now. He wants to play. See, it wants to keep going, but I'm just gonna do just kind of like a thick little wrap up top. And then there it hangs. It doesn't like to, the onions don't always like to stay the way you want them to. And that's my biggest difficulty with them, but I think they look cute like this. I like that a lot. Um, but we'll do a dagger next. I still have plenty of wire. I'm still using 26 on this. Um, it just really depends on your beads. Like I said, if you have, if you can fit 24 gauge in there and wiggle it around and it's fine by all means. Yeah. I'm using 24 for these big check drops right now. And that's, I, I like, to, I like thicker wires when I, when I can get away with it. The 20, yeah. The 24 we're going to use for the check drops on the project. Oliver. Oliver is Rachel's cat. If you do not know that. <laughs> um, okay. So the dagger. Let's see how we like this with two strands. 
I have it with the one strand right here and it's exactly the same how we've been wrapping it. This is 24 gauge. Um, but we're gonna come in here with the 26 gauge and see how we like this with the, the twisting and then the double, because we might like that even better. And then I'm gonna show the, we're gonna do the crystals from the box. I knew we kind of reviewed that a few weeks ago. Oh, but I think it's would be awesome to show your special wrapping okay. for that, that irregular type of item. Yeah. My strands are not even on this. I didn't even bother to even them out. Whoops. We'll be okay. Um, <laughs> this is our Relax Friday. We. If, I know. If we I'm a very, have... like, chill beater, I feel like. I'm gonna, which is very contrary to how I usually am, because I usually am <laughs> very anal about everything. Um, like my boyfriend's like, can I put this on the top shelf of the dishwasher? And I'm like, no, <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I, I'll criticize the dishwasher while I'm unloading it. I'm like, why would you put this here? Um, oh, I, I cannot stand when folks don't put dishes like facing where the water comes from. Like when someone puts a dish facing like outwards on the top shelf, I'm like, how do you expect any water to get there? That doesn't make any sense. The water. I know. I'm like, center. why would you put this sideways? Oh my god, I have so many you? thoughts on stacking it. This is so pretty. <laughs> I like this. So I think the answer to the dagger is, is two strands. Ooh, pretty. Look at that. Wait, can you go show us a close-up? Oh, wow. I real picked a good color on this one. <laughs> I should have grabbed one of the darker ones, because you know this mix has much darker ones in it. <laughs> oh, oh, that's pretty. Yeah. Lori, he um he plays fetch, so I'm pretty sure he wants me to play fetch, but I'm in a bar stool right now and I cannot reach down and get his ball to play with him. So he's just gonna have to play by himself for a little bit. Can you imagine simultaneously teaching and <laughs> entertaining a cat who wants endless attention? I told him that he was eating early so he wouldn't bother me, but he apparently did not get that memo. I don't know where the other cat is. Did you rope him into playing with you or he run away and hide? All right. So I, um, I, I've got one of the the quartz points out. These are the um, blue plate quartz points from the bead box. And um, we are going to cut two pieces of wire for this. So we're going to cut two pieces, probably like six inches again. It's going to be too much. I'm going to tell you right off the bat, it's going to be too much. But. This was my dilemma when initially wrapping the quartz points because you can go in here and you can try to wrap it like a brio. This one actually might work. Let me find like a really difficult one. Let me find one of the ones that like the ones that actually look like points. You can yeah, never I, I, find one of those I, evil I feel, ones. Yeah, all of my all of mine have like flat tops. <laughs> How convenient. <laughs> yeah, I know. How convenient. None of the ways I want to show you. Um, so I feel like if I, man, it's going to work too. Like they've all got notches and they're going to hang fine. But okay, pretend like this wasn't hanging fine and like the loop was at the top like that, but prettier. And then you like go to make an earring out of it and then it keeps hanging like this. Okay, that's my usual problem with like anything abnormally shaped quartz drops. Um, some of the really cool, um, well, I think actually a lot of things lately have been good. Oh, I wanted to show, not that this is, well, let me show my quartz, the quartz points. Anyway, so I developed this method to get them to lay the way you want them to, no matter what you're doing with them. So I have two strands of wire and we're going to put one strand through and then bring them to one side. So I put it through the hole and I'm bringing them back to me. I've got like all these little pieces of wire and I feel like it's, I want you to be able to see. And then I'm going to come and I'm going to twist them. And you're just twisting enough to where it comes up the side of the bead. And I think it looks really pretty and fancy. Now we're gonna bring, eventually bring our wires to the center of the bead on the top kind of. So you can twist more if you want to. Oh my goodness, Oliver. 
Again, I say I kicked the boyfriend out. I should have kicked out the cats. Jeez. <laughs> okay, so we're going to put the wire through the other uh, side. Um, and then I'm going to twist on that side too. You can twist the wires or you can twist the bead. Like this is like right when I first learned how to open a bottle of wine, I was turning the bottle of wine instead of the corkscrew. Um, <laughs> and then I saw somebody else do it, and I was like, "Whoa, that way is way easier." Wait, now uh, I'm just trying to imagine. Not that I've opened that many bottles of wine, but let's see. Yes, you should be turning the corkscrew on top instead of the whole bottle of wine. Oh, okay, absolutely. So I, that yeah. makes logical sense. I've got the wires uh, touching up top. So like we would, basically this is our version of pinching them together um, on top of the gem. And I did this the opposite way that I should have because these are way longer. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm just gonna take this bit and just wrap it around once like I do with my regular Brio wrap. And I'm gonna clip it. And I will answer that question that's in the comments in a minute. Um, okay, and then I'm gonna come in here. I'm gonna just, man. I'm on camera. What did you do, Rachel? I I don't know why my. This has happened the last three times that I've okay, tried. We'll just start dancing until you're. <laughs> I don't know what it is. It's like Safari on my phone keeps crashing. Um, so while Rachel is working on that, I can show I've got I've been very industrious while Rachel's been going, and I have um, ten of my brios wrapped ready to go for the bracelet that we're about to. Oh do. my gosh! <laughs> Who am I? <laughs> I know. I'm a, I'm I feel like a new person. Um, new Sam. Who this? <laughs> I don't have your number saved. Hello. <laughs> um, <laughs> How many, do you know about how many I'm going to need for the bracelet we're going to do after our Brio demos? Um, let me see. The, well, the thing is the length of the, um, the chakra beads is a little different than the length of the sea glass pieces we used on, um, the... Bracelet. I think we had used like 11. I would say at least 11. Oh my god, then I'm almost done. I'm so ahead of the yes. game today. So, anyway, um, I'm at this point still, and then I'm going to come in here and just do my loop. You can also twist these two strands together still more if you want, and then you can have that pretty loop that we had on the other uh, brios that we were wrapping. I feel like this is a pretty versatile thing. You could add beads to this and then it would look like the quartz point was wrapped in beads. That would be really pretty. Ooh. So. I love that idea. Beads wrapped in beads? That sounds like... Buddy, you gotta color. chill. <laughs> <laughs> Next time you're not getting early dinner, you'll just starve. Um. <laughs> so anyway... <laughs> Just, I, was like, I accidentally fed them too much too because we've been mixing it up and like giving them half and half of something but it was like a quarter of this one can and then half in another can and I accidentally gave them half of both things and I'm like putting in the bowl I'm like this looks wrong so here's this so you can also um, twist your loops if it's going a different way than you want it to so I could have my loop go that way and then it could hang like this. So this is um this works great for anything that has a hole that's like top drilled and you're not really sure how to wrap it. It's not staying how you want it to. This is a great way to do it. Um yeah. So the question was um <laughs> it was yeah, I'll pull it. I can put if it on the, the top is broken off of a brio can you how can you still wrap it so if it's a brio 
I would just put it in my little broken jar and move on. I'm going to be honest. If it's one of the like, big quartz points, because the size is, I mean, it kind of depends on it. You can find other ways to wrap it. Wrapping without a hole in a bead is not really my specialty. I don't really do um, cabochon wrapping. I tried doing it the other day and then I got frustrated. So this is as far as I got. Oh my God. <laughs> I wrap some wires together, um, oh, so but cool. you could probably figure out something like this if it's a bigger bead. I think the wire I was using is too big um, is the problem because I was using 20 gauge and I was just making it up and it was a nightmare. Um, but so, yeah, you could probably build like a little cage out of it if you wanted. I saw I think I saw Judy had made like a cage out of some jump rings um, that... I don't know how exactly it went but you could put a bead that doesn't have a hole in there and and that and that you can find lots of different um i think a lot of them call it like it looks like a little hot air balloon i don't know how they do it it's like some sort of chain mail design it's not really my That's whole thing. That yeah i'm i'm not even gonna try i don't <laughs> i don't know how to do it but there is a way to make like a little basket for things out of um jump rings and if anybody knows what that's called, <laughs> feel free to write it in the comments. Yeah. Um, I'm not 100% sure what exactly that is. Shall so, we make a bracelet, Rachel? I'm yeah, I'm let's make a bracelet. Today. Now that I have this little pile of stuff, um, none of which was how I was planning on using it for the project. <laughs> okay. So for my bracelet, I'm going to use 20 gauge and 24 gauge wire. And we're going to be, um, I'm using the chopper rounds from the bead box. These are, what are they, eight millimeters? Yeah. Like. Um, so these are eight millimeters. You can really, this is a really versatile design. And you can see um, just based on this. Um, this is sea glass and then glass brios. Now I will say that for this design, especially because they're, I don't know, I'm always hesitant to put fragile things like stone brios on a bracelet. Uh, maybe that's just me. I always slam my wrists into things like whack my arm on the wall. So I don't know. I would put glass brios on a bracelet, but I don't know about stones unless it's like a really big stone brio like those carnelian ones. Like these are actually all of these carnelian ones look really strong. So maybe just depending on the gem. But we're going to use the check glass today um, that came in the bead box. So I think it'll be really fun. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be building parts. We're going to be... Oh, I paused for a second. Am I muted? I can hear you. Oh, it's my overhead that's muted. JK. Um, <laughs> You're good. We're going to do this in two parts. So we're going to make all of our... Um, our regular wraps and then we're going to make our uh brio wraps and then we're going to connect everything um that is how i like to do my projects i will say if you do not have 20 gauge you have things that are smaller than 20 gauge like 22 gauge or whatever um i would do double wrap loops through those and you're going to have to change up your design a little bit 18 would also probably work really well with these um chakra beads it looks like the hole is big enough for eight but 20 gauge is a good sturdy size to hold a normal bracelet together this isn't meant to be a tight fitting bracelet it's meant to fit kind of like a charm bracelet so let's start let's go in rainbow order because uh why not or i should say like chakra order um okay so i've got my first loop and i'll show that again and then I'm going to bend over the top of the bead so it's pretty flat. These are the prettiest. I don't remember what these are. The red jasper? That's what it is? Yeah. It's like little Jupiters. Um, <laughs> okay. That's pretty. So I've got my uh, wire cut. For me, usually when I go to measure it, it's usually about three-eighths of an inch. And depending on your pliers, you're just going to kind of have to figure out where you usually wrap that's 
the size you want your loop to be. There's no like exact measurement I can give you without you having exactly the same thing as, as me. And I just kind of eyeball it. So I make my loop and we'll do it again. Um, Lori, the chakra beads are, um, they were in this month's bead box. It's just uh, beads uh, that are in the colors of like the chakras, which uh, if you do um, yoga or like a meditative practice, the chakras will be referenced, um, just different points in your body that reference to these um, I'm not a good explainer. Are you better at right. explaining this than well, me? Well, I know I'm not super familiar, but I know that there are seven chakras um, yes. represented by seven different colors. And then yes. you can read, like, there's so much written about all this online. That so this, <laughs> this strand is basically like a rainbow strand of gems that was in the beatbox. Yeah. So we're going to show this again because I keep forgetting to show. So these are just regular loops. Um, I called them... I, I think I have called them simple loops in the past. And by that, I don't mean they're simple to do. I mean that they are um, just a singular loop. Is he? Do you want me to lock him in the other room? It's kind of adorable, but if you want to. <laughs> Oliver, quit it. <laughs> he's persistent. You got to give him that. I don't know what his deal is right now. It, maybe he's looking for my boyfriend. I keep um, not I think, talking about the loops I'm making. <laughs> no, simple loops. I think it's time to just start calling them evil loops. I don't know why evil we're loops. being so nice A lot of people them. hate them. Um, I, yeah. you know, it's funny is this is the loop I really, this is like my bread and butter. This is like my favorite loop to do because I, I don't like to purchase jump rings. I have very few quantities of them no matter where you buy them from they're always a different size um like i have like three different two millimeter jump rings and they're all different sizes yeah there's a lot of variants so where it's, I, where the, yeah yeah don't like buying jump rings so okay so we're going to talk about this loop again i'm going to actually talk about it this time so i've bent over i'm going to cut like i said mine is usually about three eighths of an inch so you've got your wire at a 90 degree angle. And then I'm going to come back in here with my pliers and grab it. And the biggest key to doing these loops, aside from like tr kind of being on the spot with how uh, the like circumference of your pliers in reference to how long you've cut your wire. But the biggest thing is that when you grab your wire, you don't want it sticking out the other end. That will make your loops more oval and circular. So you want to be able to see it, but you don't want it to be sticking out past the pliers. You want to be have a good grip on it, but you don't want it like I can't touch it right now unless I stick my nail in between the pliers. And so you want your pliers to have a good grip on it, but you don't want it sticking out. And then you're going to just loop your pliers back towards you. And you got a loop. There's another reason I don't like to use eye pins because I feel like my my loop is never as good as the eye pin loop. So if I do both loops, they're the same. Yeah. I don't think I've ever purchased an eye pin. I uh, use them very briefly, and I feel like I still have some that I bought like 18 years ago because I hate them. Um, <laughs> I think at one point I ran out of jump rings and I was like trying to cut off the eye part and like use it as jump rings. It doesn't work, by the way. Um, yeah, I can't imagine that would work. Oh, awesome. Karen has some good information about the chakras in the, um, in the comments. Julie, I don't think it is cheating to use a one-step looper. However... It is not my tool of choice. I find that in all of the videos I've seen of it or the pictures, I feel like the um, the bead, the wire never gets as close to the top of the bead as I want it to. Mm. I like to have it like flush with the top of the bead. Um, it's just a personal preference. 
but I would say whatever method you choose in your jewelry making, just be consistent. Jane is asking, um, do I include beads over 10 millimeters in the subscription box? I mean, yes. We always try to include like some focal type beads. Rachel has the pink trapezoids there. We had the quartz points that were like 20 yeah, millimeters. The quartz points are round beads wise, I don't know if you have you had yeah, round, round beads wise, ever? probably not because the the most sought sizes that people the sizes that people most commonly want are always going to be six through ten. Um, and I feel like a more specialty type size would be better for something for me to stock in the shop versus put in a box that like a lot of people are going to receive. Yeah. I haven't seen a lot of like big round beads. I feel like any like really big round beads I've seen, the hole is always way too big. Yeah, it definitely, de yeah, it depends. Sometimes there's a standard hole. Um, I, seen a I used to stock a lot of big beads in the shop because I really, I used to really like how much detail you could see in gemstones in this one. Yeah, like I think I got these beads. from you like years ago. Yeah. These were from, yeah. Um, but you have had some bigger beads and the subscription box just not round. We did 10 millimeter rounds in the in last month's box with the with the artistic Jasper. That was a larger type bead than we had been putting. Oh, yeah, yeah, I have that bracelet somewhere around here. I think I hung it somewhere weird. Um, <laughs> I can't find anything. It, it looks like it's organized, but it's not. Anyway, so let's, um, I'm gonna get some Brio's wrapped in a second. I got way too much wire. And if you're noticing when you're like turning your wire in that you have cut too long of a piece, you can totally just snip it off and then come back in with your pliers and make your little loop. All right, let's do one. Let's do two more actually, because I don't even have all the colors here. And then we'll do the brios. You know what I want to know is, you know, like the 1980s version of Annie? No. <laughs> no. I'm not They're super like, familiar with Annie. I only know some of the music. Sorry to let you. Sorry to let your musical theater heart down, Rachel. Yeah, well, it's like, I don't even know who is in it. Well, anyway, I just want to know where I can find it because I can't find it to stream anywhere. And it's driving me crazy. You can find all the other Annie's except for the one that I grew up watching. So is that the classic the movie one? Is that like the, the Yeah, most... the movie. It's not like the old, old one. It's just like, no, I don't know. If anyone knows which Annie I'm talking about, you might it's the one that to... has the famous lady, lady is Miss Hannigan. You're going to you have know. to go to the library, Rachel. They have movies at the library. Well, my um, my Blu-ray player is broken, so never mind. So the, I wanted to stream it. Like if you go to the Performing Arts Library in Lincoln Center, they have like viewing rooms and you could sit and watch the movie at the I'm library. I'm not going to sit <laughs> in a public space and watch that movie. So I think you get like uh, a private room. I think that's how it works. I get my own private viewing room to watch Annie in. <laughs> and I just look have, in and there's like this. Like, they have archives this, like, like... Go ahead. <laughs> no, it's okay. You can watch like they have recordings of like tons of old musicals. Also, you can sit. Yes, yeah, Carol Burnett. Sorry. <laughs> in what? In Annie. Oh, in, in Miss Hannigan. Yeah. <laughs> Carol Burnett. As, Burnett is the famous lady. LOL. Um, <laughs> this wire is not a brand. This is just bare copper wire I got from Monster Slayer. Um, I usually oxidize it. For most of my pieces so that it doesn't um oxidize on its own <laughs> it's just how i want it to be but um we're not using that today we're using the bare copper wire you can also get um i've heard good things about para wire which has like a coating on it that makes it less susceptible to oxidation yeah an artistic okay. wire is gonna have the coating on it you could use a coated wire for this product. 
like a oh, colored really? wire. You totally could, because we're not doing any hammering. So it would totally be fine. All right, and then this is 24 gauge. The reason I'm using 24 gauge for this project, number one is because these brios can handle it. And number two is um, uh, because we've got 20 gauge right up against it. I just think it looks a little bit better when the gauges are a little bit closer in size, as opposed to having 20 gauge right next to 26 gauge. I mean, this doesn't look that bad actually because it's twisted so much, but I like how the 24 gauge looks thanks to the 20 gauge. You could use 26 gauge, but you might want to double it. Um, Shira, for you, for your reference, I definitely know what a VHS player is. Yeah, I had, I had a VHS player. I, and I'm younger than Rachel. I, I had a VHS, VHS player. I know that if you fast forward through it, you ruin the video for the rest of your life. Um, I was alive for Be Kind Rewind. Um, so <laughs> I'm going to do, I think I'm going to do on these ones, I'm going to twist the two together. It's a little bit harder with the 24 gauge, but I think it'll be pretty. Let's just mix it up. Oh my God, I'm so excited. I'm going to have a chop, my first chalker bracelet so I can wear at the end of this class. Yay. I don't need anything but you. Some people like really hate Annie. My best friend hates Annie. And so uh, in high school, I used to hum it under my breath um, <laughs> around her. And she like, she doesn't like it, but she definitely could tell when whatever song I was humming was for Manny. Like, I'm like, man, for someone who doesn't like it, you sure do know all the songs. <laughs> Would you show us our final result of this bracelet just so we know where we're headed, Rachel? Yes. I actually do not like the 24 gauge doubled on this wrap. Oh, I love it. Um, no, I don't, I don't like it on this. And this is real. This is not my fave. It's a little big. Um, this is the final bracelet. And again, if you want to look, um, if you want to um, know more specifics about the sea glass and stuff, um, we did do this in a previous class, uh, but we're doing it exactly the same right now. Um, now with your Brio wrapping knowledge, you can use daggers if you want. I lost track of what, or my, which wire was which. I got all these spools everywhere. Let's see where you're at, Sam. Oh, okay. So I've got all my brios, and I have Beautiful. my chakras. Um. So I'm just waiting for the next step from the teacher. Okay. But I can wait patiently. I can take a break. Well, you could make more um, ones of the chakras. Am I going to need more than seven? Unless you want to put an extender chain on it. Okay. Then I shall that's make not gonna more be long chakras. Enough. Yeah, that's not going to be long enough. Especially because men tend to have larger wrists than, than women. And excuse seven me. I definitely. I have dainty small wrists. Thank you very much. You do? What size They're... your wrist, Sam? Um, no idea, but, um, this is six inches. That's a lie. <laughs> Maybe. Because, because my boyfriend has, a, is very thin. He has a small frame and his wrist bone, like, is way bigger than my wrist bone. It's just a fact. Um. Yeah, I don't have, like, a, a bendy tape. I don't, I'm not going to figure it out. But, yeah, it, it ain't a small wrist. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna wrap more chakras. Here we go. Okay, let me just get like, mm, four brios maybe wrapped. I'm going back to my regular wrapping for them. I didn't love the double wrap with the 24 gauge. It's just. <laughs> Yesterday. <laughs> Mm 
Someone should make so, a mashup of Tomorrow from Annie and Yesterday <laughs> by the Beatles. Yes, no, okay. yes, yes. <laughs> I'm going to be really honest, and I'm a lot of people are going to hate me. Um, I'm not a huge Beatles fan. Um, uh. So I 100% don't actually know what song you're talking about. Um, <laughs> oh, God. Yesterday. <laughs> All my troubles seem so far away. Da, 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 da. Cause Was that I the musical? believe in yesterday. That one, you know it? It sounds familiar. It's like, I mean, I try not to be super critical of like not knowing songs because like I don't, I, I have very select knowledge of songs and know, which means I know, anyway. But I'm just surprised because it's like a, one of the mo very popular uh, yeah. Beatles songs. You know what's, what's funny is that my sister and I, neither of us are really Beatles fans. And we definitely went to go see that movie at the movie theater. Was it called? I think it was called Yesterday, maybe. It Where he like, he was like, what if the Beatles didn't exist? And then he stole all their songs and it had right. Lily James in no, it, which is the main called? reason I wanted to see it. I think it was called Yesterday. And it was... My sister, in the middle of the movie, she turned to me. She goes, can we leave? <laughs> evil. Evil. She hated it. I didn't love it. Um, My dad's been trying to get me to watch uh, Bohemian Rhapsody, the, the, the movie about... Uh, My mom Freddie Mercury. was so obsessed with that movie. She... This is when I was living at home... It was on like HBO or something. She kept watching it and I would always catch the end. Number one, I know the You Can't Stop Me Now, the like live 1970s version. Like I will never be able to get it out of my head ever. But my mom, like I don't even think she could have told you which songs were Queen before that movie came out. And my dad was a big like, I, I don't know if he was a big Queen fan. I wouldn't be surprised if he saw them in the 70s because he saw like everyone. He grew up in Long Island. Um, all the like classic rock bands, he's seen like everyone. Um, but my dad comes in the kitchen one day and he was like, you know what? You're really making me hate queen. <laughs> 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 we were all like, mom, can you please pick another movie? <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen any parts of the movie besides like the credits and like a little bit of the middle. Um, I've heard it's good. I think I still I need to watch it. I want to watch it, but at the same time, like I'm like, oh, you're never gonna watch it. My mom point. watched it so many times. What if it's like not actually good? And then I'm like, why would she watch this so many times? <laughs> what you mean, I like Trolls know. Two? Trolls Two is amazing. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> that is the only Trolls. I mean, there's only two, two Trolls movies, but that's the only one that I can get my boyfriend to watch with me. Um, and We've actually, like, had other people, like, I've gotten him to put it on when other people are here. That movie is amazing. Um, I don't care what you say. Have you even watched it? I love that no. movie so much. <laughs> no. I love Trolls. It's amazing. Okay. I have some brios now. So we can get on to constructing. <laughs> I So, but side note, I got kicked off the live sale last night. Because my boyfriend came home and I had I slept all day yesterday. Like I woke up at three o'clock, was like not feeling it, and went back to bed. And he comes home and he like gives me a hug and he's like, "Do you know you have a fever?" Oh. <laughs> he kicked me off the live sale. He takes my laptop. He goes, "No beads. Go to bed." And he oh sends me God. to bed. <laughs> I'm fine, by the way. It was like 99. So if it was any higher, like it had passed. But I was like, no wonder I felt so bad. Um, okay, so I'm going to start with one of my chakra beads. Uh, and I'm just going to open up the loop I made. This is why I love doing the quote-unquote simple loops. Evil. Is because you could just open them up. And then you don't have to use a jump ring. But if you have an aversion to the simple loops, or you've made double wrap loops, or you just want to use jump rings, um, go for it. So I put my... Um, my wrapped loop on here and i'm gonna kind of like separate them like this 
So the goal is when, when we're putting the next uh, chakra bead on there, when you're putting your next eight millimeter bead or whatever you're using on there to put it on this side. So when the bracelet, when you go to like, when you're done with the bracelet, the daggers will be in every other direction. So that's how we're going to construct it. Oh, I didn't or make my, my loops on my daggers that big. Well, so I'll have to do. Let's my see own if you version. can fit them through. <laughs> I, cause I use I use 18 gauge on my chakra bead. So there's. Oh, oh, darn it. I didn't know about that step. You've made this before. I think I made the same mistake last time. I forgot to say too, to make sure you make your loops big enough. But so now, now so my that's mistake, my bad. I hope helps Oops. everyone else here make the loops on your brios. Um, much larger a little than you bigger. Think. <laughs> um, but that's okay. But I can you can connect this all together. You can use a, a jump ring if you have to. No well, one's gonna, gonna know. I'm just gonna connect my beads together, my chakra beads directly together, and have the um, daggers dangle off. Lori says that Trolls 2 wasn't as good as the first one. You know, <laughs> story-wise, probably not. But music-wise, it's a lot easier to get other people to watch it because it has so many um, different genres of music in it. That's um, what I liked about Frozen 2. Frozen 2 is so good. I can't get Samay to watch that. He won't watch it with me. He's like, I've seen parts of it. Yeah, he won't watch it with me. I put it on. He leaves the room. Um, I think it's just to hurt me. Um, but there could be a real reason. He's like, I don't want to watch anything with songs in it. I've been trying to get him to watch The Greatest Showman for like Oh, I, I despise that movie. I you cannot. hate it? I love oh, it. Oh, my God. I saw it in theaters and I wanted to vomit. I saw it twice in theaters oh, and I was God. so happy about it. Um, anyway, okay, so once you've got your first Brio connected, then I've got my second one on one of the loops. And if you hold it to the side you want it to be on, like I'm doing right now, so I'm holding the Brio and I have it flipped to the side that it needs to be on once I attach my other bead, it's a lot easier to get in there. I mean, my loop's pretty small, and the 20 gauge fits pretty well. So, I mean, I didn't make them tiny, but. Oh, he's so pretty. I wasn't sure about how the orange would look with this, but I actually like it. Yeah, the orange is actually quite a nice, because it kind of has a richness to it. It's a nice compliment yeah, except, to the chakra. Except the green wasn't supposed to be next, so I got to undo it. Um. <laughs> Do you know the proper order? Because I don't. I believe... It is, no, I don't want to say it, because what if I'm wrong? Yeah, I'll pull it up. I think it's, I think it's the tiger eye third, though. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, kind of fuchsia. I just don't really know what color tiger eye is, because to, to me it's kind of brown. I think the tiger eye is the orange. Oh, well, then I have these two. Oh, no, we up. have orange. The orange and yellow are the tiger eye and, and yellow event train. <laughs> you see Judy's comment. <laughs> Sorry, Judy. <laughs> yeah, Samay's like, I just don't want to watch Wolverine sing. I'm like, we've watched Blue Miz. I'm like, I just think that's a, such a ridiculous thing to say. Like, that's like out of all the arguments you could have, like, that is the most ridiculous one of why you wouldn't want to watch it. I don't yeah, know that's, what that's, pretty dumb. that's so like a, a macho man, toxic masculinity thing to say that it makes me so mad every time. I started arguing with him about it last time we were talking about it. I was like, come up with a better reason. Yeah. Does he know that he's literally going to play the lead in the music man on Broadway? He's like going to be a leading man cares. on Broadway. The music man isn't anything that I was ever like really into, but he's been on Broadway before. It's not the first time. No, it's literally part of his career. I think he's just being a pain in the butt. <laughs> oh, I just did this wrong. Your boyfriend, okay. we're to be clear. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
not my cat. Oliver will watch anything I make him watch. Um, anyway, <laughs> so yeah, if you hold the Brio in the way you want it to go, it's definitely a lot easier to make it go. That's so funny. Wait. I didn't do anything to the cat. I don't even know where he went. Okay. I didn't wrap enough reels for this. I'm just going to use my random ones on, that are like on the bead mat. Mm -hmm. I feel like you either really like The Greatest Showman or you really hated it. I mean, there's some like, so there's some good songs. There's a couple of good songs in it, but none of them were sung by our leading man. <laughs> also, I, I I confuse Hugh Jackman and Robert Downey Jr. So, <laughs> TBD, who we're talking about? We're talking That's about. I know we're. I know we're not talking about Robert, Robert Downey Jr. is Iron Man, but they Robert Downey Jr. Same has a, a lot more drugs than his history. Um, <laughs> ever you? I think you you probably would not have watched this, but have you ever heard of Ally McBeal? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, I've heard of it, but I have not seen it. Um, well, Robert Downey Jr. was in it, and he was supposed to marry the main girl. And um, and then he got arrested for, like, coke possession or whatever at the right before the last season, and they just wrote him out of the show. And everything that we had been working up to Allie getting her life finally together got ruined by Robert Downey Jr. And like, no matter how much I like him as Iron Man, I still like hate him a little bit on the inside. I think the um, moral of the story is men ruin everything. I thought it was don't do coke, but- Oh, um... that could be it too. <laughs> <laughs> Here's your little uh, dare lesson in your local beach show. Um, but- <laughs> Um, okay, so I'm getting to like the end point. This is not going to be long enough for a whole bracelet, but I also don't want to. Can I show you what, how mine ended up? Sure. So the way that you say that leads me to believe that it did not end up how we were expecting. Well, because I had to adjust what I was doing. Yeah. Um, and I just use them as accents on each loop. So I, on every Oh, single... I think it's cute. It is cute, but I am going to need more Brios because I'm almost out. <laughs> yeah, for sure. If you uh, were not comfortable with your Brio wrapping before, you will be now. But I really like it. I like how it's going to be nice and dangly. It's going to be really fun. You could um, you could also like throw in some other Brios in there. Like what I think would be really pretty is um, those new like black ones that you got in the shop. I, I messed Ooh, it up the, again. The the etched ones those are so pretty yes i need to get some oh we're um, talking about west side story in the comments that i can get behind oh we are the little baby yes the little baby and ally mcbeal it was so weird like you I couldn't even explain to you. Like, she hallucinates this baby, but, like, doesn't go to the hospital. And the baby sings this one song. <laughs> Sorry, what? <laughs> and Allie would feel, what song does that sing? It sings, Ooga Chaka, Ooga Chaka, Ooga Chaka. What song is that? Ooga Chaka, Ooga Chaka, Ooga Chaka. Why do I know what you're talking about? You know what I'm talking about. And the baby's, like, going, Ooga Chaka. <laughs> it's so messed up. Like, <laughs> it's creepy um and then you know nothing they might have resolved the baby in the last season but i got mad and stopped watching um so at this point you can either keep going um or you can do uh an extender chain which i like to do on a lot of my um bracelets and necklaces because i think it makes it a little bit more versatile I think that's the one thing that kept me from making bracelets initially. And one of the reasons why I don't make rings is because I just, I hate to spend so much time making something for it only to be able to like work for a select number of people fit wise, not necessarily taste wise, but fit wise. I wanted to, I'm like, I want it to fit everyone. So uh, that's one of the reasons why I like to use extender chains. Plus I think if you design for an extender chain, then you can always, 
put more or less chain on there if somebody requests it. Right. But so you just add an extender chain and a clasp. And I also like to add a little bead to the end of my extender chains always because I just think so. I think it makes it look so much more finished. Ooga chaka, ooga chaka. Hooked on a feeling, yes! Hooked on a feeling. That is what the baby was singing though, right? Right, Judy? Why is the baby singing? I don't even remember. Sam, put everybody on. You want this? Not just me. Yes, thank you. Um, is there anything else anybody wants me to show? Oh, we are over time anyway, so. Yeah. <laughs> but I really like this design, Rachel. I forgot how much I liked it. Yeah, anyway. it's so versatile. You can really just change out the beads for really whatever you want. You can even take, um, I've done this before. I think I showed this in the class book that we rasp, wrapped quartz points in, but you could even take, if you wanted to, you could take a round bead and wrap it like the Brio wrap if you wanted to, and then just have it hanging a different way. I do this oh. sometimes with, um, I've done this with like a lamp work bead before too, just to have, just to like change things up. I left myself way too long of a tail on this, but like you could like hang it like this in between the beads. It could be cool. Huh. Just to, like different ways. It's so much versatility. And you've, and you've says also, I mean, you could use a head pin too if you wanted to add on standard drill. Oh yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Head pins also exist. Um, yeah. Yeah, but I, this is such a fun design. I'm going to have to finish up this bracelet. Yeah. I really like the do amber have, tones. Do you have uh, this stuff? Do you have any extras from the bead box that you're going to be putting in the shop? Yeah, we have some extras. If we people have, want chakra strands. or Yeah, we use a lot of what we had for the box. So we mm -hmm. have the extras are going to go up on Monday, the Monday live sale. Yeah. So you, have, you always have a lot of fun um, check brios in the shop too. Oh, yeah, so yeah. you don't yes. have to use what we use. You can really use whatever you want. Um, yeah. I just, I love the versatility of this design. I love uh, something I love to do in my wire work is I like to use the simple loops in um conjunction with like the double wrap loop. So something that won't open with something that will. Um, it's really great, especially when you're trying to figure out what necessarily like your design aesthetic is or what you really want the piece to look like. Cause it really makes it easy to take everything apart and <laughs> put it back together. They're basically jump rings without being jump rings. Yeah, I think I can see that simple loops are maybe not evil. They might be a little bit helpful. Yeah, I'm slowly. I would say, but for, for bracelets, um, don't go below twenty gauge, and yeah. even for necklaces, honestly, don't go below twenty gauge because they can pull apart. Yeah, um, I mean, get some eighteen gauge. It's so lovely. But eighteen gauge does not fit through everything, and sometimes you just don't want that big of a piece of wire. Mm -hmm. That's fair. With this, with these big beads, like it works great. But if you have a smaller bead, it's kind of a big piece of wire. Yeah. Um, um, that's why Anastasia was asking about the chakra strands. I think I have like maybe a dozen of the chakra strands left. We didn't, we don't have as many extras, but I'll definitely have to order more because they are very fun and they're not too expensive of strands either. So it's kind of nice to get seven different beads on one strand. Yeah. Um, and they're, I like a multicolored piece. I feel like we, I feel like I do a lot of like multi, either like one color monochromatic or two colors. And that's you. Oh, <laughs> you what look like Drew just killed you. Because it's um, we can't find the straw for this yeti in the metal straws. He put so much ice in it that the the straws are like colder than the drink, but then the drink is cold at the same. It was just very cold, like a lot of cold at once, and it's soda water, so it's not like it's like normal water. It's like also like acidity from soda water and lime, like. Um. Where was I? So, oh, the colors. So <laughs> I'm realizing this bead box, because it's such like a like color array that we haven't had in the box before, it's actually outside of my own uh, design style. Because I usually like one or two colors yeah. in the story. Because um, we were talking about this in Gem Times. Like, this is, is like a very different box to design with. And I think that's it because was. a lot of us aren't used to using this many colors together. 
And I think it's actually a really cool challenge. Like I'm already really excited seeing how these colors come together like this. Mm -hmm. So there's my thoughts on the box. There's a lot to play with, yeah. Um, but Rachel and I are going to go hop off. Yeah. We so appreciate you always, everyone, being here with us for our Thank hour plus. Thanks for being here. Um, we hope we, we may, we're able to make your Friday a little bit better and inspire you. If you make something, share it in gem chat. Um, yes, please. So we can see and we can ooh and ah. Um, but I hope everyone has a lovely weekend. I hope you have a lovely weekend, Rachel. You too. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. And we're signing off. Good night, everyone.